Hello and welcome to this video about the Emerald X20 versus the McPherson Sable. These are both standard size, fully carbon fiber, beautifully made, incredibly professional instruments. One's from Ireland, one's from Wisconsin. I've had this Sable for about three years now and it's been on a lot of adventures with me. The X20 I just got, but I had another X20 in the past and have had several other Emerald guitars, so I'm familiar with their line. These guitars play very different roles in my life. And so I thought it would be interesting to make a video talking about the similarities and differences and the kind of pros and cons as I see them. I'm going to start out by talking about the structural and kind of practical aspects of each guitar. And uh, then I will do a sound comparison. I'll play them back to back so you can hear. If you want to jump to that, there should be a timestamp in the description below. Um, in the end, I'm going to keep them both uh, because they have such different places in my life. And I realized that may not make me a very useful reviewer because I can't tell you which one's better, but hopefully my experiences can guide you to which one might be the right guitar for you. Um, so let's get started with the practical structural elements. So these guitars are actually constructed super differently. McPherson took their Camryl body style and made a sort of carbon version of that guitar, whereas Emerald went off in their own direction with the X20. The top of the sable is carbon fiber, as you usually think of it, soft strands of carbon woven together in different patterns and then fused with epoxy resin. But the rest of it is actually injection molded carbon. Um, and so it has the physical properties of carbon fiber, but it's, it's injection molded like plastic. And they did that because they found it was the only way they could get the structural consistency they wanted for the acoustics and so on. Um, Alistair Hay made boats, and so his strength is laying up carbon fiber molds. And so that's how he builds these guitars. The whole thing is actually made of carbon fiber sheets. So super different build. Do I know which one's better? I have no idea. I can tell you practically that the back of the sable is featureless and sort of gritty. And so I don't care about scratching it and it holds on your leg a little bit better. This is a guitar I take when I want to go to the campfire, when other people are going to play my guitar, if it's an open mic or something like that, because I don't care what happens to it. Um, it's a very handsome guitar in the sense that you know, your favorite shop tool is handsome, but it isn't beautiful in the sense that you're worrying about every scratch and nick and ding. It's sort of one big gray thing. And so that's what I like about it is that this is my battle guitar. Whereas the Emerald is, is high polished and beautiful all the way around. And I do worry about scratching it. I don't let other people play this one and I don't take it into places where it might get scratched or dinged. Um, and so, you know, they each kind of have that, that's a very different role for a guitar to play. You get inspired by the Emerald, um, but you brave the world with the Sable. So both of these guitars have offset sound holes, and I really appreciate that because when it comes to battery changes or bridge pin issues or a lost pick or whatever, it's a lot easier than having to loosen strings. It also gives you the opportunity to put a tuner and a pick holder inside the guitar where they won't get knocked off or, or cause trouble when you're trying to hang the guitar on a, on a hook or put it in a case. Um, and for that purpose, I like the X20 design a little bit better. Um, the top of the sable is braced and the top of the X20 is not. And so there's stuff on the inside of the sable top. And what it means is there isn't a whole lot of room right here because um, you got your, your volume and EQ controls here. And maybe if you had a really tiny tuner, you could stick it there. But the ones I used were too big. You can stick a tuner to the inside wall here, but it turns out to be more of a nuisance than you might think to have to tune, turn a guitar like this and, and fiddle with it. Maybe Dobro players would disagree. But I eventually gave up on that and just put it up here, which is a shame because I like to leave the space open for my capo. Um, the other thing about the X20 is because they're doing carbon fiber molds, uh, they've kind of gotten away from some traditional um, guitar shape constraints. Uh, they created this sort of cool organic side hole in contrast to uh, this side hole, which is what you'd have to make if you had a guitar made out of wood, or you're dealing with sheets of wood and you have to kind of cut it out. So it doesn't look quite as elegant to me, but some people find the, the progressive design of the X20 to be off-putting and they really prefer a traditional look of a sable. So that's up to you. Um, one advantage of this sound hole is that because it looks right at you, uh, the extra bass comes up to your ears when you're playing and it creates sort of a richer, more sumptuous experience, um, which you can't get with a, a straight kind of two-dimensional sound hole. Um, there are other advantages to the progressive design of this guitar. Um, they have put a, 
an arm uh, bevel here. It's fairly common these days on guitars. But they've also put a rib bevel, a fairly generous scoop here. And when you put the weight of two arms and the guitar against your body, you start to notice the traditional guard guitars, there's a ridge right there that cuts right into your ribs. The other thing they've done is you can see the bottom of this isn't straight across. It's kind of hard to tell in video. But nobody plays a guitar like this. You play it this way and this way. And the bottom of the guitar right there is angled to match your leg just like that. So it's very comfortable. And it ends up making the guitar feel smaller than it is. It feels a little more like an electric guitar in size. Now, is that a, in the jumbo, you can see my other video. It's a big deal with that one. It's not as big a deal with this one. And, you know, do I really notice when I go back and forth between these guitars? Um, not in the real world. But when I sit here and do it, it's kind of jarring to have these sharp edges suddenly cutting into your leg, ribs, and arm. So those are advantages of the carbon fiber design. So each guitar has its own special charm when it comes to the neck. Um, McPherson has their classic design where the fretboard doesn't touch the top. There's a little gap underneath there. And so the, this part of the top of the guitar is free to move. And although you don't get much sound from here, it means that the center part can move more and create more volume and resonance and so on, at least in theory. I always thought that was a really slick design. And it's a 20 fret neck. Um, Emerald recently introduced for their X20 model this heelless design in back, which they already had on the X30, which is another way in which they're saying, look, it's not a wood guitar. We don't have to follow, we don't have to have it be heel there anymore. We can make it strong enough without that. So now you can get your palm in there and really get way up to the 24th fret. And they have 24 frets on this. So if you're a high player, this is great neck access. Just you've never, nothing like this has existed before in an acoustic guitar. Some people strum and finger pick in this region though, and it kind of gets in the way. And I'm actually one of those people. So for me, who doesn't play high, it's a little bit of a nuisance, but I just back up an inch and it's okay. So I'm kind of on the fence about that one. But if I ever do find myself soloing high, it'll be worth the accommodation. Um, Emerald is a beautiful, shiny guitar. And I was always very worried that the back of the neck would be sticky, but I've spent hundreds of hours playing Emeralds now, and I've never once noticed that in playing. I thought, boy, I wish this weren't, as this were smoother. Um, but that said, this sort of satin neck of the sable, it does feel a little better to me. Um, and I don't know if that's just because it feels a little more natural, more like a, a, a sanded wood than something a shiny with a gloss. Um, the guitar overall has a sort of more natural feel, sort of rugged, um, the grit on the back and sides does hold it on your leg a little bit better. And the satin feel just, I don't know, it's a more sort of natural feeling guitar. I like the way this guitar feels better. Um, the neck's a little narrower on the sable. Uh, at the 12th fret, it's roughly an eighth of an inch narrower. I didn't, I couldn't find my calipers, but, um, and so I like that a little better too. I have big hands, so it's no big deal, but it is a little, a little easier to grab these big thumb around cords on this guitar. The um, Emerald has stainless steel frets, so they're kind of lifetime frets, whereas I believe they're still nickel on the sable. So that's a consideration um, for the long haul. So overall, I do prefer the sable neck a little bit, but if you want high fret access and you like the lifelong frets, uh, the Emerald really has something to offer. One last thought about design. Um, Emerald, so far anyway, will do custom work for you. Uh, they will do literally anything you can dream up they'll make for you, um, with an accompanying price tag, of course. But there's a lot of basic things like neck profiles and widths and lengths. If you want a slotted headstock, if you want a different shaped bridge, whatever you can dream up, uh, they'll do for you, which is pretty cool. It's a good ethos to the company I've always appreciated. I don't know if McPherson will do any of that. I haven't seen any of it. My guess is that you sort of get what they've proudly designed and that's what you get. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but I, I don't know what they're up to lately. So I just know that Emerald is really famous for having that kind of approach. So I think that sums it up for design and structure. Uh, let's play these things for a while. Okay, I'm not a fan of using YouTube to just figure out how a guitar sounds because your own guitar from Monday to Tuesday to Wednesday can sound totally different, you know. Hand it to someone else, it sounds, sounds totally different if you're playing with a different pick or your fingernails are different or the weather's different or you're wearing something different or you're pointed a different direction in the room or whatever. Your mood is different, you know, guitars can sound totally different. Um, not to mention if you're listening to this on uh, computer speakers or, uh, you know, your phone or something like it, there's just, there's so many variables that I really urge you not to put too much weight into this part of the video. 
but I'm going to do my best. Um, I'm going to do a split screen with me playing part of one song, same part of the same song, back and forth and back and forth, so you can really hear it in action, the difference. In each case, the microphone will be positioned relative to the guitar in the exact same position. Um, I'm using uh, Santa Cruz Guitar Company light strings on each guitar, both brand new. I'm using Dunlop Oltex 0.9 sharp picks when I play with pick. I'm using my own fingers when I play with fingers. And so I'm doing my best to at least authoritatively represent each guitar to show you how they sound relative to one another. So here we go. Ready?
All right, well, I'm far from a professional guitarist, but I hope that was valuable in kind of hearing the two guitarists. You can A, B them in different playing contexts. Um, I think you'll agree the sable is the quieter of the two, and that's not a trick of the microphone. I assume it's the underbracing, dampening it, but also giving it a really distinct tonal quality. So it's another way in which these instruments are just really different animals. And as I said in this video, they each one plays a really different role in my life. So if you're shopping, trying to decide which one to get, I hope this will help you decide which might be the right one for you. Um, by the way, if you heard a, a buzzing, I had a Soundbender Core metronome watch on. Um, it's kind of a mind bender to stay in time with one of those. So forgive me some timing discrepancies. Um, and that's it. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them down below. And thank you very much for watching.